Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I'm gonna to be looking at Optics, which is a plugin for both Photoshop and Lightroom produced by Boris FX. Could this software allow you to create much more interesting images while also saving you a lot of time behind the computer? Let's dive in and check it out. A few times a year, there's inevitably a piece of software that's released that really causes a splash in the industry. And I like to try new software. I'm not opposed to putting new things in my workflow. And so as a photographer, or maybe if you're a graphic artist, I think it's really important to see if there's something out there that could make our jobs a lot easier. So I was really excited when Boris FX released their new photography suite, Optics. Now, as far as I know, Boris FX has never really released anything specifically aimed at photographers. I first became aware of Boris FX back when we started F-Stoppers with a piece of software they had called Continuum Optical Flow. We used this software back when our cameras could only shoot 24 or 30 frames per second and Optical Flow would kind of fill in the gaps between those frames so that we could create a faux slow motion effect. Um, you probably saw that a lot back when we first started our channel. Luckily now we have high speed cameras that can build all those frames in camera, but it would be kind of interesting to revisit that software to see what it would do in 60 frames or even 120 frames. Might have to look into that in a bit. Anyways, Boris FX is really a heavy hitter in the cinema and TV world where their algorithms are literally used on thousands of blockbusters such as Game of Thrones, Stranger Things, and many of J.J. Abrams' latest productions like Star Trek and Star Wars. So it's pretty exciting for me to see a video special effects company come into the photography world because photography and video, they really overlap and are more related than not. So this is a very nice welcome piece of software. Now today I'm going to be using their plugin for Photoshop, but if you're a Lightroom user, you can also so plug optics into that. If you have no software that you use, optics comes in a standalone version as well, so you can use that without any other piece of software, which is really cool. Now, when I first heard about optics, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to make another video about is this piece of software able to completely replace Lightroom? And that's really not what optics is all about. Instead of focusing on how to increase your workflow by editing raw files, this software is going to take kind of a turn. This kind of does something that none of the other softwares are really trying to emulate, and that is giving your images a final look and introducing some really cool special effects into your projects. So needless to say, I don't think the software is really going to be catered towards every photographer, but if you're the type that wants to produce a perfect final image that is unique in many different ways, this might be the perfect software for you. Now, if you wanna get your own copy of Optics, head to the link in the pinned comment below or the description and you can download a trial completely for free. And if you wanna add this plugin to your own collection, make sure you use the discount code fstoppers underscore 2020 and you can save 15%. Now what I've done is I've already installed the software on my computer. I've only been working with this for a few days, so I haven't had any coaching from Boris FX. So there might be a few things that I don't completely understand. I'll point those out because perhaps they may be something that I think the software company should kind of tweak to make a little bit better. But basically I have Photoshop here. If I come up to filters, I have Boris FX right here, optics. So you can use that just like you can with any other plugin. Um, I'm just going to run through a few images and show you some things that you can do with your own work and some things that I might do with the images that I have here. So here's an image from a video that I recently did where I show you how you can shoot during the day and make your images look like they were shot at night. One issue with this photo that kind of bothers me is that I wish this light would be on in the image. Well, I think optics is going to be perfect for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to background and I'm going to turn on convert to smart object. This is going to change my image so that I can turn off any effects that I produce in optics and it's kind of a non-destructive workflow. So now that I have a smart object here, I'm gonna come up to filter, let's go to Boris effects, go to optics. It's gonna load the software. And since we are loading an image for the first time in optics, let me just kind of tell you what we're looking at. Here we have all of the different ways that we can compare and zoom into our image. Over here we have different layers, which is kind of similar to Photoshop. We can come here and hit plus and add multiple layers that could have different effects and then we could blend them in different ways. And then down here on the bottom, we have all of the different filters. Now they have nine different categories of effects that we can apply. We have color, we have diffusion bars, film lab, gradients and tints, image, which is just kind of more standard photography type things, lens, light, render, style, custom, and our favorites. So what I wanna do here is I want to add I think a lens flare that's going to make this light look like it's turned on. So let's come over here to a light. And as you can see, there's a ton of different options here. 
Let's go to S Lens Flare. Now all of the effects that have S in them are from their Sapphire collection. And that is used primarily in video, but they've allowed some of those really high-end video effects to now come over into the photography world. Instead of being completely automated, now they're just kind of a still image that you can tweak in many different ways. So let's click Lens Flare. And as you can see, there are a ton of different lens flares here. All in all, Optics has about 160 different effects throughout all of these different folders. And then there's so many different variations that you can do here with the lighting effects. So you can see you can choose different lenses. They have like a Tekina 30 millimeter, I think down here somewhere is a Canon 2470. Here's a Canon 70 to 200. You can see these look very different. We can do these anamorphic looks that kind of have that J.J. Abrams feel to them, which are really cool. It's a little more sci-fi. Although I think this effect could work pretty well in a sports image like this. But what I'm trying to do is just create a lens flare and an effect that will make this light look like it was on, even though it was shot during the day. Let's try 80s Retribution. Now what I can do is I can move this up here and just place it right on top of the light fixture. And then if I come down to parameters, look at this, it has all of these different things that I can do with the light itself. So let's change, I think the size of the, the light's a little too big. So I can come up here and go to scale width and just bring that down. I can also grab this circle and tweak it here as well. Let's pull the brightness down just a touch. I still wanna be able to see the back of that light we can also adjust the color here. I feel like that tone matches the skin tones on his body. I guess the idea would be that maybe there's a light in front of him that would be the same color as the light in the background. So you want those to match. And then we can really play around with the different rays here. We can rotate the rays around. We can increase the ray numbers. This would be kind of like if you shot at F8. If we come all the way down, this might look something more like wide open like I shot it. So maybe I'll just go really subtle. Something like that's kind of cool. We can also play with the ray thickness. I mean, you can change absolutely every element of this lens flare. And having used other software that does lens flare, I have to say this by far gives you the most flexibility. In some ways, having these lens flares might be worth the price of the software alone. And then if I really want to get specific with it, check this out. I can hit edit lens up here in the top right it's gonna bring up this Sapphire Lens Flare Designer. And here we can go through and we can turn on and off every little element of this super complex flare. So if I don't like the hot spot on the lens flares too much, maybe I don't like that kind of anamorphic look, I can turn that off. You can go in here and tweak every little element of this. So pretty, pretty wild. I'm gonna hit okay and leave it at that. So I think that looks pretty good. You could tweak this and make it perfect, but I'm just gonna hit this little gear up here that's going to apply the effect and take us back into Photoshop. And because it's a smart filter, I can turn this on and off really quickly. I could also come here to my gradient tool and I could also like kind of feather this in and make it a little more subtle if I wanted to. If I came all the way up here, I could get rid of it entirely. But something like that looks pretty good to me. So really cool effect, and if you've ever used the render lens flare effect in Photoshop, you know how often it can be really cheesy and it creates flares that are used in everyone's images. This plugin is gonna create some really unique flares that look unlike anything else. Let's move to another image. Here's kind of a fashion image that, goodness, I shot a long time ago, but let's play around with this and see what we can do. If we come to Boris Effects and go to Optics, I'm gonna come down to Film Lab, and there's so many effects in here, there's no way I could possibly show you all of these, but let's go to Film Stocks, and you can see here, we can just choose a whole bunch of different film looks. We can click on any of these and just give our images a quick final look without having to do anything. Some of these are a little over the top, so you may wanna come in and go to Parameters and start to really adjust them. Maybe this one's got just too much noise, we can come down here you know, we can really change the noise size. So I think that's just a little too much. Let's make it really, really subtle. I also think maybe the blacks are just a little too crushed for my liking, something like that. And then up here, we can do all of these different side-by-side -side comparisons. So you can see what our original image was here, and then here's the film look. Let me go back. That's pretty cool if you're a digital shooter and you wanna make your images look a little bit more like film. 
One other thing I found really interesting in watching some of the demos online was this light filter. Check this out, this is really cool. Under this light setting, they have all of these different gobos. Basically gobos are kind of like little stencils that you would put in front of your key light and it would project some kind of image on your background or even on your subject. We can do all of that after the fact in post. So they have all of these different shutters that you can go through. They all look completely different. I kind of like this one. Let's go to parameters. We can click on this and place it exactly where we want. And then we can come down here to scale and make this much larger. Now this image was shot on a psych wall, a seamless background so that it has a swoop to it. So we know that the projection wouldn't be perfect like this. So if we come up to displacement, I can start to tweak this a little bit and make it look a little less perfect. And that looks pretty cool to me. We can do all kinds of different blending modes. If that's a little too extreme, you can go down to screen. We can do subtract, which kind of inverts it. I like screen, I think that looks pretty good. And what's really cool too is it's showing you the PNG file that they've supplied with the software. But if you have your own Gobo effects, you can come down here to browse and you can uh, find them and put them right into your own program. Very, very cool. So really cool effect. I haven't seen any software that really does anything like this. I think this image was a little bit boring, but I could see adding something like these shutters in the background, kind of give it more of a fashion looking image uh, more than it was before. So let's look at another effect. I'm gonna take that one off. One that I thought was kind of cool was this Aurora. This is from the Sapphire collection. And these are really over the top. But if you shoot a lot of conceptual photography or advertising images, uh, say sports image, maybe this would have worked really well with the previous image. You'll see a lot of times Nike and Adidas and big brands have this sort of effect on top of their image. And I think it just adds a pretty cool graphic element to your work. This one's kind of cool, swirling ribbon. Now I don't know if the point is for Aurora to look like the natural Northern Lights, but this effect looks pretty cool. We can come down here and really adjust it in a bunch of different ways. Let's go to parameters and let's change the color. She's wearing red, so maybe we could do like a red color and then maybe make this go to like a yellow. It's kind of interesting. We can change the phase, stroke size. We can make this much larger or smaller. We can also blur it, make it a little more abstract. As you can see, there's just so many different parameters here that you could create something that's always going to be unique. And the chance of another photographer or a graphic artist creating the exact same effect is going to be very unlikely. Now, up until now, I would go to stock images and just buy something and spend money to create an effect like this and composite it into my work. It's really cool that you can just build this in a piece of software. So let's click out of here. Let's go to another image. This was a photo shoot that I featured on F-Stoppers maybe a year ago where I was trying to capture the night sky with these piles here in Puerto Rico. But unfortunately, there were all of these red lights behind me that kind of ruined the entire scene and there was no way to capture the stars without also capturing the red light. But if we go to optics, I think we're able to add stars too, which is pretty cool. If we come over here to the render tab, they have a Sapphire plugin called Night Sky. And this is pretty incredible. We have all of these different star patterns that we can add to our images. These are obviously looking pretty cheesy just because of the size. So let's just keep it to default. And let's go to parameters and check this out. We can change the latitude and the longitude. We can also change the time frame, which is really cool. The star size. What I wanna do is if I turn this all the way off, what I wanna do is I'm just gonna click the original image here and you can see I have some stars in this image already. And what I wanna do is I wanna match the size of the stars with this effect. So something like that looks pretty close. Now one thing I thought I could do that maybe Boris could fix here is streaks. It seems like streaks aren't actually streaks. I wanted to try to make the stars have like a long exposure streak to them. It seems like streak is actually more of like an aperture thing. It's like creating the streaks coming out of the middle of the star. So I think I wanna keep those off. I don't really like that effect with astrophotography. So zoom out and that looks pretty good. All the stars blend in pretty well. One problem that we have is obviously you wouldn't see the stars in the bottom of the image. So let me show you how they're 
masking works. Optics has different layers, much like Photoshop, and so we can just come up here to the layer that has our effect on it. And if I come over here to the plus, add mask, and go to easy mask, they have a really unique way of creating masks that I'm, I don't completely understand because I'm so used to Photoshop, but I believe I can show you how it works here. If we click this little person with the plus sign and we just hover over it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to, with a green brush, I'm just going to paint the outline of all of our foreground. I don't have to be perfect here. It's gonna do a pretty good job. It's called easy mask for a reason. Just come down here. And then now if I go to the paint bucket, I can paint inside that area. And it is now selected very crudely, my foreground. And then if I come up here to the little guy with the brush outside of him, it says paint background and turn off my paint bucket. I can now quickly outline my background. Again, this is gonna be really quick and easy and then turn my paint bucket on and then paint that in. So essentially what I've done is I visually created my foreground with green and my background with red. Now if I come up here to this little button, it's gonna say generate mask, let's click that. It takes just a few seconds. And now if I click off my mask, you can see it did the opposite of what I wanted. It removed all the stars from the background and put them on the foreground. But if I just select my mask again and come up here to this little button that inverts the mask, it's now going to change the blacks and whites, and now, boom, we have stars in the sky and not in our foreground. So you can do complex masks in here, but you can also do incredibly easy masks just like this. And if we zoom in and really examine this, it did a pretty good job. I don't see any stars on top of our piles. And if we had stars missing around the piles, I don't know that anyone would really notice that. So it works pretty well there. One final thing I just wanted to show you, check this out. I can come up here to mode and change to night sky locations. And then depending on where you live, you could choose different parts of the world. It's pretty, pretty remarkable. I know a lot of photographers are gonna say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're cheating with the stars. But I could see this being a really valuable tool if you're just trying to get the gist of what it would look like at night. Or when Elon Musk gets all those satellites in orbit and ruins our night skies, maybe we're gonna have to resort to something like this to actually capture what the night skies would have looked like before we have all of these different satellites. So let's get out of this image. Let me just show you a few more little things that you can do in this software. Here's an image that perfect timing I took last night, not knowing I would use this in this tutorial. And we were hit with a huge tropical wave. I've never even heard of this phrase before, but I guess it's just a big arm of storms that comes through the tropics. And man, we had the craziest lightning storm ever. Unfortunately, I missed some of the biggest bolts I've ever seen in my life that hit very nearby. But as those were going off, I thought, let me go grab a camera. Let me do like a 20 minute exposure. And I was able to capture all of this cool lightning strikes in here. But unfortunately, I never captured the lightning strikes that hit really close uh, to our backyard. So what you can do in optics is we can add our own lightning strikes. This is Really, really cool. I don't know that I find myself adding lightning strikes to a lot of my work, but if you want to create compelling lightning that is unique and rendered one time in your own work that looks unlike anybody else without using stock photography, this is definitely the way to do it. So we can come down here to, I believe it's Sapphire Zap. And look at this, it has all of these different nodes that you can use to create your own lightning strike. This effect, I guess, is if the lightning actually hit our home and sparks are flying. I think I'm just gonna go, what is this? It's kind of crazy. I think I'm just gonna go up here to the default lightning strike. And let me see if I can't place this in a way that looks a little more believable. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do in the parameters yet. So I don't know if I should have this actually hit the ground or if I should just kind of have it creeping up through the sky. It should probably be going through a pretty bright part of the image because if this was a huge bolt, this would all be lit up. But let's go down to parameters and let's see what we can do. We have bolts, look at that, we can change the number of bolts. It's like the end of the world right there.
the bolt width. I'm going to go kind of subtle here. Branches, this is what I want. Look at that. That's <laughs> pretty wild. Let's see if I can duplicate this and add a second bolt to it. I mean, you can get a little ridiculous with the branches. I think most of the time you see very few branches, but let's have this bolt start in the clouds because it, it would kind of light up the sky if it was going all the way across the frame. So I don't think I want to make it like too intense. Let's bring the overall bolt width down and then we can hit done. Pretty cool. It's a little subtle. I don't think I want to go too over the top with it, but you could see just how much creativity you could have with something like this. Pretty a neat effect. And finally, let me just open up one more image so that you can just see some of the more basic effects that you could do. There's no way I could possibly go through all of the effects that you can do in here. One thing I've noticed that I don't totally understand is when I import a new image like this, sometimes it applies the previous images to this image, like there was a lightning bolt in there. I don't know why it does that. And then also I can't always right click and delete all of these layers. Like sometimes the delete layer button shows up. So I don't know if that's like a little bug um, or it's just me not understanding the software, but it's a, there's a few little things in here that have thrown me off a little bit. Let's see what else we can do. Stylize allows you to do all kinds of graphic art. So if you want to have, you know, blurs and different half tones and make, you know, posters and that sort of thing, you could do that. That's probably more useful for graphic designers than it is for photographers. Light, I showed you uh, the Aurora and I also showed you just the, the gobo effect. We also have light leaks. Let's see what this does. Here we have a bunch of different light leaks that we can apply to our images. We can go through and tweak those all that we want. Let me turn those off. Let's see what else we have here. Rainbow, <laughs> that's pretty wild. Some of these are a little novel, but you never know when you need software that can build something like this. It's really nice just to have it do it for you and you're not looking up tutorials on how to create star effects and spending a bunch of time. This will just do it very, very quickly. The last little preset that I'll show you here that I thought was interesting in researching the software is called Match. And what Match does is it allows you to choose another file that's completely unrelated and it's going to match all of the tones in that image with your image. So let's see here, if there's a black and white image that I really like, here's one from uh, Richard Avedon. I could select that and it's going to apply that same kind of toning to my image. And then I can come down here to parameters and I can change, you know, maybe the brightness or the overall color. I could bring some color back. I don't know that it really works with this particular image. Here's a crazy colored image. So say you had a campaign that you're doing where you're trying to match the colors of all of the images and they're all widely shot in different environments or if they're black and white and they have no color whatsoever, you could kind of use one reference image to give all of the pictures a similar color and then you could kind of tweak it here and there. I do wish they had a few more parameters here to adjust this a little bit more, maybe play with like contrast and your black points and that sort of thing, but really cool effect that you could use that I've, I've never really seen any other software do anything like this. So that is the Boris FX Optics plugin for Photoshop or Lightroom, or they have the standalone version. I think it's really cool because it does something so different than all of the other pieces of software that I usually look at on a regular basis. Um, if you wanna get your own copy, definitely head to the link in the pinned comment below or the description. Use the discount code fstoppers underscore 2020. You can save 15%. Just a little bit about the pricing here. You can buy this software for $149, which is totally reasonable. If you don't wanna spend that kind of money, you can also subscribe per year for $99 or this is really cool, for just $7, you can subscribe for a single month. So if you find yourself just using this every now and then, $7 is really affordable. Like I mentioned before, I would go through stock websites and buy individual stock images to composite into my photography. I would definitely spend a lot more than $7 a month on that. So definitely head over to the link below, you can check this out. I really think this is a cool software and I can't wait to see what they do with it. Keep in mind, this is the first version of this software that they've released, so I'm sure it's going to get better and better as they develop it more. And it's really cool to see a video software company releasing stuff for photographers. So if you want more content like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Also head over to fstoppers.com for free daily content. And if you wanna check out our full length video and photography tutorials with some of the world's best artists, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. See you guys soon.